In our lab at the Institute of Neuroscience and Psychology at the University of Glasgow, we aim to understand the complexities of human emotion communication. As social beings, humans communicate a lot, especially about how we are feeling, our emotions. To communicate our emotions, we can perform facial expressions. That is, we make different movements with the face to reflect different emotional states. Here, we study the temporal dynamics of facial expressions of emotion. But why is this important? Facial expressions are dynamic signals that transmit information over time. Designed by evolutionary pressures, some signals might be transmitted early or late depending on their function. For example, the wide open eyes might signal an imminent threat in the environment. To do its job properly, that is, to let others escape the threat in time, the signal would have to be sent very quickly. So how do we study the dynamics of facial expression signals? With two components, a psychophysical method called reverse correlation and a photorealistic generative model of facial movements. My co-author Philip Shins will now explain the power of reverse correlation. Reverse correlation is a psychophysical method that can reveal the dimensions of a stimulus the human brain uses for categorization. To illustrate, consider the picture of a fearful expression. Our research question concerns the facial movements that signal fear. One approach that we have developed, called bubbles, consists in randomly sampling contiguous pixels from the face image and then ask the observer to categorize the sparse expressive stimulus. When the random samples comprise useful categorization information, such as here, the observer would probably identify fear easily. With these other random samples, the observer would probably not identify fear easily. Across many trials, we sample uniformly all the pixels of the image and determine that the wide open eyes are systematically associated with correct categorization of fear. Ecological validity and trial numbers motivated the development of a new reverse correlation platform in Glasgow that my colleague Oliver Garrod will now present. The Generative Face Grammar, or GFG, created by Ugard and Shins, builds upon the bubbles method by using reverse correlation, but with dynamic facial movement. To build the GFG, we first recorded each of 42 action units, that is, individual facial movements such as nose wrinkler or eyebrow razor, performed by trained individuals using a 3D stereo optical system. We then parameterized each action unit using six temporal parameters to control their movement. By combining action units and controlling their temporal parameters, we can therefore attempt to synthesize all facial movements. So, how do we use the GFG to model dynamic signals of facial expressions? On each experimental trial, the GFG combines a random subset of dynamic action units to produce a random facial animation. The naive observer views the stimulus and categorizes it as expressive, for example, angry, if the random facial movements correspond with their mental representation of that particular facial expression. After each observer completes around 2,000 trials, we use reverse correlation to identify the dynamic facial movements consistently associated with the perception of each emotion. Using the GFG, we modelled dynamic facial expressions of the six classic emotions – happy, surprise, fear, disgust, anger and sad – in 60 Western observers. We then used a combination of information theory and Bayesian classifiers to analyse their signalling dynamics. We show that dynamic facial expressions of emotion transmit an evolving hierarchy of biologically basic to socially specific information over time. Early in the signalling dynamics, the common transmission of biologically rooted facial movements give rise to systematic confusions between specific emotions. For example, early transmission of the eyelid razor in both fear and surprise gives rise to their confusion. Later in the signalling dynamics, the transmission of diagnostic information, here the eyebrow razor, allows surprise to be discriminated from fear. The mouth stretch discriminates fear from surprise. A similar pattern is found with disgust and anger. The common transmission of the nose wrinkler gives rise to their early confusion. Disgust is then later discriminated from anger on the basis of the upper lip razor left. Confusion between anger and disgust is also reduced due to the upper lid razor. Our data therefore question the notion that basic human emotion is comprised of six categories, instead suggesting fewer, where fear and surprise and disgust and anger each form a basic category, possibly signalling different types of danger. Our next goal is to understand whether these early signalling patterns are also found across diverse cultures.